The European Open just concluded for the ninth time. It has yet to become a stable major where we see that the PDGA Worlds and the USDGC happen every year. The European Open happens every other year for the most part. Over the nine times that the European major has been held, we have five winners in total. Now there's something I need to clarify. There is the European Open, which has happened some years where it was not considered a major. For example, 2016, Paul Macbeth won the European Open, but that year it was not considered a major. We also have the European Major, a completely different major often held at different venues. The European Open for the past six events have been held in Nokia, Finland. This course, The Beast, has become a staple in the disc golf community. The first three Opens were held in Tampere, Finland. Since some players have won more than one title, we're going to be jumping around a bit on the timeline. Since it started all the way back in 06, let's go there. Here we go back in time to Tampere, Finland for the first ever European Open Major Championship. This was the first major that the PGJ ever had in Europe. After this, events would start to explode. First event in Europe, and the Americans would show up. The best players at the time, Ken Climo, David Felberg, Nate Doss, these guys would all show up and play well. The top European finish was second, but not by much. He just barely beat American Avery Jenkins by one. But all of these guys were out of it by a long shot. David Felberg would win the first European Open major by 12 shots. He had a six shot lead to start the final round, and he would just not let off the gas. First European Open title for Felberg, but not his last. We fast forward to 2011 to a completely different course. Nokia Finland would host the fourth European Open Major Championship, and it would be a fight. Three players in contention going to the final round. Nate Doss and young Paul Uliberry would be tied at 26 under. David Felberg just two shots behind. The front night would not go Nate Doss's way, it quickly became a two-person race with Ulibarri and Felberg. Hole 12 would be a two-shot swing in Felberg's favor. After throwing a great approach shot, Felberg makes birdie, Ulibarri misses the birdie putt, then this happened on his par putt. He wasn't out of it yet, Paul would birdie 15 and 16 to get back into a tie. He had this putt on 17 to take a one-shot lead, but couldn't get it done. Final hole, par 4, Ulibarri up first. His drive would barely go out of bounds, but from where he was at, it was a good position to still make par. Felberg had to make a birdie if he wanted to win. Here's his upshot to win his second European Open. Now we jump back to a couple of guys who only won the European Open once. We need to remember who the king was at the time. Ken Climo. We already saw him when Felberg won the European Open the year prior in 06. Now 07, here he is to take down the European crown. And it was close, to start the final round at least. Climo had a two-shot lead over defending champ David Felberg. Climo would play super consistent in all four rounds. Felberg, on the other hand, just had one bad round, but it was the final round. Climo would go on to shoot a solid 10 under in the final round, just piling on the birdies. Felberg would only shoot four under. Failed to defend his 06 title, Ken Climo, a world champion, a USDGC champion, and now a European champion. This would be his only major win overseas. We have already seen three European Opens. No European winners. Where were these guys at? Come on, you gotta defend your homeland. Finally, in 2009, a European would get that win. And he had to beat the best Americans to do so. David Felberg was tied for the lead going into the final round, and Ken Climo was just two shots back but with them was the lone European disc golfer. Just kidding, there was like five Europeans in the top 10, but this one lone disc golfer, he had to fend them off. And he did, spectacularly. Jesper Lundmark, a major winner from the year prior, was here to defend the European ground. He started the day in a tie with Felberg, but it would not end in one. Actually, this one kind of became a blowout. The Americans failed to show up in the round. Felberg and Kleiman would not be able to hold off Lundmark as he headed to the finish line. The first, and sorry for spoilers, but only European disc golfer to ever win a European Open major title. Jesper Lundmark, the European hero. And now we enter the era of Paul Macbeth. Too many wins to count, I mean this guy's just too darn good. Actually, I am able to count. Macbeth would win not one, not two, not three, but the next four European Open titles. Spanning from 2013 to 2019, here are some of the highlights of these moments. 2013 would be the inaugural year of the Empire of Macbeth. Here he was, winning all the events in the US, time to take his talents overseas, but it was close. Really close. Hole 17 in the final round was all tied up at the top. David Felberg had the box first on the very windy day. His drive would turn over in the wind, forcing his disc out of bounds. The same would happen to Macbeth, but just at the end his disc would cut roll back in bounds. Macbeth pars, Felberg bogeys, 
Now all Macbeth has to do is hold on in the final hole. Macbeth would miss his birdie putt, giving Feldberg a chance. Here's Feldberg's putt. Oh! 2015 wouldn't be as close. Macbeth had a three shot lead with two holes to play. Ricky Wysocki was chasing, playing really well at the end. He made birdies on 16 and 17, but Macbeth just didn't make any mistakes. A cleaner win to defend his European title. With two holes to play on this one, Macbeth actually wasn't winning. He was down one shot to Greg Barsby. 17 is a tough par three. Macbeth threw a great shot, put himself in position, and he makes the putt. Now we're all tied up going into the final hole. Macbeth's drive was solid. Here's Barsby's on the tee. He needs this one to get in play. I put mine in bounds. That puts all the pressure on Greg right here. And that's... Oh, my goodness. That I didn't see how it went OB, but man, I, I mean, at this point... Barsby wasn't out of it either. He would get himself up by the basket with a chance to save the par. He would make this bomb putt to put the pressure on Macbeth. Make this for the third European Open title in a row. What? Where's the excitement in that? And this is a... That's a championship putt right there. I mean, that's... It's crazy to think that Greg went three rounds, 17 holes without surrendering the lead. 71 holes. And... The comeback kid. Not usually how we see Macbeth. Usually he's in the lead. Well, he got into the final card for the final round, but not by much. To start the final round, he was four shots back to Eagle and five shots back to Ricky. Macbeth would birdie, then birdie again, and keep on birdieing until he couldn't stop. By the time they got to the 16th hole, Macbeth was 11 under, and he had a three-shot lead. No one could catch him by then. He plays smart at the end, wins his fourth European Open title. This one he had to really earn. Paul Macbeth, four European Open titles, the most in disc golf history. A two horse race, no doubt about it. Third place was 16 shots back from second place. What an incredible tournament. If you didn't get to watch it, you really missed out. The 2022 European Open just concluded and it was spectacular. We have two main characters. Paul Macbeth looking for his fifth European Open major in a row. Not having the best season so far, but still looking pretty solid. Second major of the year, Macbeth is looking to grab onto it. Eagle McMahon, haven't seen him like at all this year. Shoulder injury at the end of last year, still affecting him this year. Not including the All-Star event, this was Eagle's third event of the year. Last time we saw him was back in April at Jonesboro where he had to pull out due to his shoulder. We know Eagle for his powerful forehand. Well, he couldn't use it. No forehands at all, actually. Eagle would turn amazingly to his opposite backhand. When I saw him do this, I was like, he already makes me feel bad about my disc golf game. Now he's throwing lefty. Macbeth should have this in the bag, right? Well, the final round started, both of them tied for the lead. Macbeth would take the solo lead early on, at one point having a two shot lead, but Eagle would bring it back. This battle would make for an exciting final nine holes. Hole 11, Macbeth makes this putt to take a one shot lead. Hole 12, Eagle would tie it back up with a birdie. Then this putt on hole 13 would finally give him the lead. 14 and 15 they would push, now this is where it gets interesting. Hole 16, par 4, Eagle has a one shot lead. His approach shot he pulls out of bounds, Macbeth makes a great shot looking at birdie. Eagle would have to put this shot close to save the par or else Macbeth would actually take the lead. Macbeth on 17 would leave his drive out to the left, just hopping out of bounds. Eagle plays safe, lays up his putt, back on top with one hole to play. 18, they would literally put their drives on top of each other. Macbeth up first, he basically parks it, all pressure left on Eagle. This shot could win him his second major title. It's hard to encompass what this year has been like for Eagle. Injuries, pulling out of events, Last year he was incredible, now this year just hasn't felt right without him on the tour. I don't know if he's back, but the stars aligned in Finland for Eagle, and I don't know about you guys, but I missed him. Thanks for watching guys, as always, if you enjoyed the content, make sure to check out my channel. I have plenty of other videos just like this one. Alright, we'll see you next time. Cheers.